Okay, this video is going to be about HTML tables. It's another way of organizing your website content. Tables today are used for tabular data. And I thought we'd do a little history lesson before we get into Dreamweaver and the tables. I'm going to open up a website. This website is called the Wayback Machine. It archives websites from way back. And I went ahead and put Northern Virginia Community College in here, and we're going to browse. And it's going to find all the old Nova websites. I'm going to click on here. Up here, it shows a little bar and shows you when the Wayback Machine captured the college's website. I'm going to go ahead and just click in this range. Okay, this was one of the first websites the college created. All right, this website was actually created using tables as a layout tool. We don't do that anymore. I mean, that is definitely internet history, but we used to create complete websites just with tables. Let me go ahead and just for fun, click this range here, see what comes up. Okay, this one actually is a bit modern, more modern. It is using CSS layout principles such as divs, but again, way back, in the day, we used to use tables. Uh, now we just use tables for tabular data. I wonder what we're going to get if we go way back here. See if we get the same website. Yeah, still up. Now I actually used to work for the, the college in the web design department, and I'm very, very familiar with this website. If we go to Loudon, for instance, let's see if that one comes up. Yeah, a super simple website. Back then, all the different campuses had a different website. Look and feel. Again, built with tables. Okay. Yeah, this goes back to 2003. Anyway, uh, we're going to use tables in a design today based on modern principles. All right, I am going to open up Dreamweaver. Okay, I've got some old pages open here. I'm going to close these and open up a new page. All right, create new. HTML, none, create. And I'm going to go ahead and save this right away. File, save. I'm going to navigate to my USB, Art116, named folder, and I'm just going to call this Tables Demo. And save. First, what we're going to do under the Insert menu, we're going to insert a table. Okay, you get this dialog that pops open. First off, when you're inserting a table, you can decide how many rows you want, how many columns you want, how, how many pixels as far as the width you want, and I'll just leave the defaults right now. If you want a border thickness, if you want any kind of space cell, cell padding, I'll go ahead and put five in here and cell space in here. And as far as the header, we're going to choose none. Now, if you chose one of these other ones, if you chose left, all the items in the left column of the table would be bold. In this case, all the items on the top would be bold, and then you've got both. Now, tables in Dreamweaver, now as we use them, are very much like you would use tables in Word or Microsoft Word. Now. Down here, you would put uh, information for accessibility, such as the name of the table and what the table is about. 
Uh, just for simplicity purposes, I'm just gonna skip that for right now. And then Dreamweaver puts a simple table in your design. If I go ahead and pull on the side, I can expand that table. I can type in that table. I'm just typing on my keyboard. Let's type in here. And you see what just happened? It shifted and tables will do that in Dreamweaver. That was one of the challenges using tables to create layouts in the past. I'll go ahead and type in here, dog. Again, I could fill them out. Now, up, up here, you can see the cell padding and the cell spacing. If I open up my property palette, okay, and click on the edge of the table, I can see that I've got the properties for the table. Again, the property palette is sensitive to what you've selected. I could come in here and I could change the rows and the columns. I'll go ahead and change the columns here to six, okay? I could change the rows to five if I wanted to. I could change the pixel width. Maybe I'll turn it to 600 and expands. I could change the cell padding. I'll use a larger number this time, okay? And the word dog is moved to the, from the edge of the cell and the cell spacing, this time I'll do 15. And the cell spacing is the space in between the cells. Okay, the border, I'll go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. I'll do five, okay. And then I'll go ahead and preview real quickly. Okay. Again, you can see the information on the table here uh, in the browser. I'm gonna go ahead and change something now. So I'm gonna close my browser, come back here, click the edge of the table. I'm gonna take off the border, okay? And now I'm gonna preview again. And now it's invisible. Now, when we were building layouts way back when, this is how we would make the layouts with the borders and the cell padding being invisible. So it was kind of a trick, kind of a hack to do it that way and definitely much more of a challenge when designing complete websites. Probably why they were so simple back then as well. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and select this one and just delete it, okay? We're gonna create a more complex table. So I'm going to go insert table again. This time I will do eight rows and maybe eight columns. Maybe I'll pump the width of the table up to 800. I'll leave the border on for right now, I'll leave the cell padding and cell spacing to five and I'm gonna keep it at uh, none right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. Now what you can do is you can scroll through your cells like this. You can come down here, you've got actually two icons. I can't do the second icon right here because it splits and that's not what I wanna do. I want to merge, okay? Now, if I click back in here, and now that I can split them, and it asks me how, how I want to split. Do I want to split the rows, or do I want to split the columns, that cell? And maybe I will do two, and say okay, and it split it up, okay? And you can pull these, but at some point you can't anymore because the, the uh, table's getting too complex. I'm gonna go ahead and merge those again. It's a good e reason to merge them. You might want to merge a cell if you want to use just the top for information such as, I'm going to type in here, my five top favorites. So maybe I'm making a table a tabular data about my favorite things in the world. Favorites, okay. 
Maybe I want this side of my table 